Well, here's something I've been putting off doing for a while. This is my trusty Commodore Amiga A600. It's shown up on this channel several times before. As you can see, it is currently playing the Xenon 2 demo disc. If I turn the sound on, you can hear the excellent soundtrack. But if you know it well, you may be able to tell that something is not quite right. Now, if I switch from the Xenon 2 to uh, KRF's Amiga test suite, through the magic of video editing, I can do this like this. I can demonstrate in rather more detail what's going on. It's currently set to play a sine wave through the four Amiga sound channels, uh, all currently off. If I turn on the left channel, you get an annoying beep. If I turn on the right channel, you also get an annoying beep, but it's a quieter one. If you turn on both at once, you might be able to make out the fact that the left channel is much louder than the right. So, what I think is going on is this machine needs recapping. It hasn't been done yet. All Amigas need it eventually. So, I'm just going to have to do it. It also doesn't help that Commodore kind of screwed up with the circuitry, with the audio circuitry on the A600 and used the wrong type of capacitor to smooth the, uh, sorry, to decouple the output audio. So it chances are that those two caps are failing and that's why we're seeing this problem with the audio, which is amazingly annoying. I don't like recapping machines. I'm not particularly good at it. I have actually done someone else's A500 and it does seem to work. So I'm gonna give it a try on this A600, which will be fun. Okay, here's the A600 motherboard removed from the machine. The capacitors we need to replace are these electrolytics here. They contain on the inside uh, a tightly wound coil of paper and foil all soaked in disgusting electrolytic fluid. And the fluid evaporates over time causing the capacitors to dry out and that changes the electrolytic properties of them. If you're unlucky a capacitor will actually start leaking fluid onto the PCB, which is really bad because the stuff is noxious and corrosive and can wreck your PCB. So this is actually a fairly straightforward job. The most difficult bit is going to be these two capacitors here because they're sandwiched between the, uh, the audio jacks and the keyboard connector, which is this thing here. Seeing people on YouTube who've done this, uh, mostly what they seem to do is to desolder this. However, you really need a vacuum desoldering gun to make that work, and I do not have one. So I am going to attempt to do this without desoldering this thing. Now we can get a bit more room by unclipping the top part of it, but it's not a lot. Now, this is the point where I need to explain what I'm going to do. Because there's a right way to remove capacitors and there's a wrong way. The right way is to use a hot air gun or hot tweezers. Now, I don't have any hot tweezers. And while I do have a hot air gun, I've tried removing capacitors with them before and it just doesn't seem to work. Uh, I'm just very bad at it. And what tends to happen is that I melt everything on the board around the capacitor and I blow off all these epically tiny surface mount components. And these are actually quite big ones. So I'm going to take these capacitors off the wrong way. And this is where I will, my comment section will fill up with people screaming that this is bad. This is correct. The way I'm going to remove these capacitors is bad and you shouldn't do it. However, I have practiced and it is safer for me to do it this way than it is to do the right way. So I'm going to demonstrate, but not on the Amiga. 
So that goes over to the side, and we get out a junk board. And let me demonstrate what I'm going to do. So here we have some zoom onto the board. And here is a capacitor that we're going to remove. This is a surface mount capacitor. It's uh, fastened down by these two metal pads onto the surface of the board. Now, it's tempting just to grab the thing in the pliers and pull. This will ruin the board. The copper on the surface of the PCB is glued to the fiberglass backing, and these pads are very small, and as a result, there's not a lot holding the copper pads down. So vertical uh, force is likely to tear the pad off the board, and that's a bad thing. So instead, what I'm going to do is to grab the cap firmly in the pliers and then do this. I am pushing down on the board. What I'm doing is using metal fatigue to break the wires inside the capacitor. There we go. And let me put the upside down cap here so that you can see it. So one leg has actually come off inside the capacitor, the other has come off a bit further down. Uh, this has left the soldered on parts of the legs safely still attached to the pads on the board. I think this one, which you can see sticking out, may have actually pulled off the solder, but it's left the pad behind. So that was a little bit risky, but seems to have worked. I can then use the soldering iron to clean up the pads and remove the torn legs of the capacitor. And I've done a ton of practicing on this board, and this seems to work and be reliable. So that is what I am going to do. Okay, moment of truth time. I'm going to start with a nice, easy, big one. And this. Trick is small movements because you're not trying to break anything with brute force, you're trying to use metal fatigue to break the wires. It is coming loose. There we go. Perfect. So I'm now going to make a note of what this is. So that is C303 it is a 22 microfarad, looks like 35 volts. I've got a list somewhere else, but it's best to be sure. And interesting. That doesn't look great. Uh, the solder is dull and there's some goop on the board. Yeah, you see the discolored tracks there? I think that capacitor was leaking. Yeah, this, uh, this machine is definitely overdue a recap. Okay. So I am just going to power through these and you're going to see it all in time lapse because this is really boring.
Okay, that is all the surface mount caps taken off. Some of them have left behind the bottom plastic uh, shell. Uh, they'll come off when I clean up the pads. However, first we need to take off these electrolytics. These are through hole capacitors and should be relatively straightforward. Hmm. Okay, next step is to remove these plastic things. So, let me think the best way to do this. Hold it in my quite expensive and extremely nice soldering tweezers. Heat up the pin and it just lifts off. Okay, and now we go and do all the others. Some of those melted rather than coming off with the pins, but this now takes us to the next stage of the process, which is to add copious amounts of flux and then clean up the pads. And removing the capacitors has left fragments of uh, wire behind. So we have to remove those. Okay, now we attempt to clean the flux off with IPA. Mostly look clean, but now we're going to attempt to use a piece of desoldering ribbon to remove any excess solder from these pads. So now let's try putting one of these new caps on the board. So this stuff is pick and place machine ribbon. It's not really designed to be used by humans. So we remove a capacitor and this came from the bag labeled 220 microfarad. I'm a little perturbed by the fact it says 220 on the can but I have no way to measure it, so I don't know if it's correct. We'll just assume that uh, Mouser did the right thing. Is this Mouser? DigiKey. Whether well, DigiKey did the right thing. So let's bend the legs up just a little. Now I'm going to do 304 first. So let's see if I can actually get this right. Put solder on the positive side. Nice fresh leaded solder. 
So actually holding the soldering iron in my left hand here, because we want to apply just a little bit of heat here. So that end of the cap goes down and gets put into place. Uh, positive is the side that does not have the stripe. And now I can see that the other end of the cap needs soldering. Um, yeah, that's locked in place. Yeah, that wasn't great. Uh, normally with surface mount components, you put the solder on one end, fasten that down and then go to the other end. I think that with these, I need to try putting solder on both pads first. So, And it is in place. Okay, so now we just repeat this process, hopefully with focus. Focus. There we go. So these two are now fairly firmly soldered on. So we repeat this process with all the other caps on the board, except for these two. I'll come to these. A bit of a problem has shown up. This is C321, which is a 10 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. These are the ones I bought. These are 10 microfarad, 250 volt capacitors, because I couldn't get 25 volt ones. I didn't realize, but these are substantially bigger than the pad is. So these ain't gonna go on. Now what am I gonna do about this? These are just way too big. Uh, I could make them go on by making them stand proud of the board. The legs on the bottom will bend down. It'll be a bit awkward to solder and of course they will stick up. I think there's room. Uh, there's a big electrolytic here so yeah there will be room. Uh, the other thing is to use through holes. Uh, they'll have to go sideways and have the wires soldered on here. I think that is actually worse than using the surface mounts. Um, I'll go and do a bit of poking around. Okay, through hole it is. Now the floppy drive goes up over all this, so there's not a lot of clearance. So this is going to have to go more or less sideways. So we're going to bend these legs. Okay, uh, positive is to the south of the board, so this is going to go on like that. So let's trim the legs down. Okay. And a stripe goes to the north. So let's put some solder on the pads. and put some solder on the legs. Should it be better off this way around? It's certainly easier to put on this way around. It just needs to be at a slight angle Beautiful, more or less. Okay, so now we just need to do the same for this one. This one is further back, there is more clearance, so it will stand upright, I hope. Okay, I think this is working. It's a little bit ugly, but it should be fine. So let's go over to the other side of the board, because now we're now done with the, the right-hand side. 
to these. If you look at the positioning, this thing is uh, awkwardly in the way. So I can put the component on, but then there's no space to solder the top leg. Oh, that's awkward. I can attempt to melt this pad and then slide this in before it uh, solidifies, but that does not seem like a good idea. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll never get it off again. So I think if I bend these legs way down, I can then stand the cap up and get in underneath to sold the, solder the thing in place. Now this plastic shroud here is, well, it's going to come off completely. Uh, what this is for is to stop the rim of the capacitor touching the PCB. I actually don't think we need it. So, And I'm actually going to start with the one over here because I need to be able to get in on the right hand side. So positive south stripe north Like that. And then it will bend over to uh, go upright because it's slightly projecting off the left side of the case. That's kind of terrible, but it does seem to be working. So we can do the same thing with this one. Okay. Like so. Hmm. Not very happy. Also not happy with the focus. But it looks like it's working. Okay, the next two, C235 and 236. These are 100 microfarad jobs. And two of these, and I these should be the right spec ones. Okay. So now we need to do C two three nine, the one next to it. This is the chart says that is a hundred microfarad job. If I put these on in the wrong place, two three five at two three six. 100 and 100. Right, so this one is also a one of these hundreds. And that's pretty short on space. So this one is actually too far over to this side. So let's see if we can adjust it. This is one of the advantages of this horrible hack. Oops. Okay, well that wasn't very well soldered on then. Important to note that this one actually has the, the plus sign to the north, so this is inverted relative to the others. So I can make this go in, but the question is, will I still have room to attach the IDE connector? Because it's going to end up cantered over, rather. There's one way to figure this out. Okay, here is the IDE connector. So if we plug this in, then how much clearance do we actually have? Enough just. Now, uh, I was originally thinking that one of these would be one of the 10 microfarads. But looking at my chart, I see that these are uh, 321 and 306 we've done, 460 and 214. 
uh, C214 is this one, the label is here, and 460 is this one. And it's also worth noticing that these are also the opposite way around. So we can easily put our two standing upright ones here and here. So it's this one that's the awkward bit. But I think this can be made to work. Okay. Wow, I hope this will work. I don't think I managed to show this on camera. Yes, that goes on neatly there. This one is C459 and it is a 22 microfarad surface mount. And this is one of these little red ones. So this one should actually fit, which will be nice. And the other end goes down. Easy. <clears throat> so now we have this one. Uh, I think that's actually all the surface mounts. Yeah, we've just got the through holes to do now. Yeah, this is as this is through hole stuff, it's going to have to be uh, both sides of the board, which is I'm going to have to hold the thing more or less vertically to work on, which means that none of it's going to show up on camera, so I'm just going to do this bit offline. Sorry. Okay, I've managed to attach the big through hole capacitors with varying degrees of goodness. This one just wouldn't fit, so it's standing up. Which brings me to the last two, which are these. These are the audio capacitors. Amiga, sorry, Commodore. What's this? That's a metal freak. Uh, Amiga cocked up with these. Uh, this is, these are decoupling, smoothing, whatever, the output audio signal. So the voltage range these have to cope with goes positive and negative. And you're not supposed to use electrolytics for that. Uh, you're supposed to use unpolarized capacitors, uh, ceramics, that sort of thing. And this is probably why these have failed on my Amiga. Assuming they have failed, it's not something else. So I am going to attempt to replace these with, come on, actual surface mount capacitors. Now, I'm not sure this will work, but let's give it a try. These things are tiny, so the first thing you need to do is to add solder to just one pad. Like so. Then we remove our capacitor from the package. Just one. Um, I'm not actually sure these are big enough. So I want to put it there so it spans across the two pads. I think it'll work. Yeah, I think that will actually work. So we hold it down and apply some heat. That should have soldered it down on one side. It has actually moved. So let's see if we can get this back on track. Yeah, that's still fa that is still fastened down. So now we apply some solder to this end. And we're done. 
once you actually have the knack of it, surface mount is supposed to be much faster and easier to solder than through hole. I do not have the knack of it. Okay, let's see the other one. So that goes here. Okay. Now do the other side. Okay, and do actually seem to be solder joints both ends. Yep, I think that's done. Excellent. Uh, and I actually forgot there are two more I need to do, which are these two, which are some more of these. And we're going to stand these upright. Okay, I believe it's done. So now I just need to check things and then we start reassembling. And then see if it works. Okay, everything looks all right. So moment of truth time. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Well, the computer seems to be working up to a point. There we go. Nothing's exploded. Nothing's making nasty hissing noises. OK, we should have some stuff hooked up. So I turn on. And it should boot. OK, so we go to the audio menu. And it suddenly occurs to me that I can't actually hear what's going on when this is hooked up to my capture device. So after plugging in my headphones, I have discovered that sound is only working on the left hand channel. So that suggests that I've cocked up something here. Uh, the left-hand channel is this one with the red connector because for some reason these are reversed, which is odd. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of setup in order to debug this because I can't do it with the uh, the capture card plugged in because you know I need to be able to hear what the result is. Well, I did some poking with the oscilloscope and made a few discoveries. So here I've got the schematic of the audio system for the Amiga 600. And the audio comes out of the Paula chip here to the right channel. And then it goes through this series of filters. And then it goes to the right jack circuitry with C334, the capacitor that we replaced with the ceramic here. Now, this is the Paula, and the right pin is, I believe it's this one. And I managed to trace this on the board that is here to these two op amps that make up the filter. And all the four audio op amps are in this chip here. And I managed to trace the signal so that it was arriving at pin. It was coming uh, out of pin 8, which is here. That is this pin here on the op amp. And then it goes through some stuff and it goes through the other op amp to pin 7, which is this one. And I was observing that the signal was going into pin 8, well, rather out of pin 8, but not out of pin 7. So my immediate thought was that the op-amp failed. And that's easily replaceable. 
If it was partially failing ahead of time, then possibly the stress of replacing these two caps next to it caused something to fail. However, this didn't seem entirely likely, and indeed further tracing showed up something rather interesting. So the signal comes out of pin 7 and goes to C334. So here is pin C334. And if I do a continuity test, of course, we get nothing through the capacitor because capacitors don't conduct through them. However, if I touch the metal piece on the top of the capacitor and this pad here, we get nothing. But if we do it for the one next to it, we do get a signal. This solder joint is bad. It's not hooked up to the capacitor. I'm not sure why this makes a difference. So if we zoom out back again, I can see that there is a contact between pin 7 here, this is the output of the op amp, and the bottom end of the cap. But of course it's not connected to the top end. So as far as the op amp's concerned, this pin is just not connected to anything. Well, there's a bit of other circuitry there. But I can't see why we're not getting any signal coming out of this pin. The only thing I can think of is something on the uh, on the output side is drawing that line down. But I can't find anything like that, and I don't know why having this capacitor hooked up would make a difference. But this is something which is wrong, and therefore it is fixable, so let's go and fix it. So fixing it should be straightforward. We just need to heat this joint up and apply solder. I think that will probably do it. So let's turn the meter on and try that. No. Interesting. Still nothing. So that is metal. This is me touching both ends of the uh, the metal thing on the end of the capacitor. Okay, it, it doesn't help that I'm not actually seeing what's going on very well. Okay. I saw the solder actually flow over that metal end cap, so that should now be working. Yep. Just testing the other connections. Yep. Okay, so that's not a great joint, but it should at least work. So that's not a great joint, but I think that what I need to do now is to hook everything back up again and see if that has made a difference. And what do you know? It doesn't work. It's doing exactly the same things it was before I recapped it. This is a good thing in some ways. Listen. So the left channel is working fine, the right channel is very quiet. So this is suggesting that something else is wrong with this. Possibly one of the components in the output stage. This is all nasty little surface mount stuff. So 
So I've identified these four components here. And they are all surface mount jobs on the other side of the board. Trying to debug this is going to be tricky because everything is connected to everything else. I mean, you notice that the these filters, this is a feedback affair. So the output of the op amp is actually being routed to the input. So trying to decide whether the op amp has failed will depend on whether the components downstream of the op amp have failed. I think that given that current cannot flow through a capacitor, I'm wondering if it's worth trying to take C337 off the board. That will isolate the, uh, the right-hand stage apart from these cross connects here, which I'm not quite sure what they're for. And that should let me rule out any problems with these components here. I found some references that occasionally these do die. So that's interesting. And I should really find out what these are for. Uh, these are, uh, each of the jacks has a switch in it so that it knows when something's plugged in. So I think that what this could be doing is trying to mix the two together. There is an actual mono output, but that doesn't go to the jacks. Yes, I'm gonna to have to do some reading up on this.